Chris Kim with the next video um, in our series for pregnancy fitness, uh, getting into a squat position. All right, now getting into a squat position, one of the most natural things you'll do, um, very much replicates the birthing position and helps to open up those muscles under a little bit of load and tension that is created by your own body. So it's very, very healthy. Um, you know, in, 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 uh, for, in some third world countries, uh, traditionally, you know, women will actually give uh, birth in this position. So very healthy, very specific to the task and, you know, will open up, you know, those particular muscles like no other. Uh, the problem with most of us is that, you know, because we have, you know, partial problems due to life, um, our muscles get tight. They don't allow us to get directly into that position. So we're going to kind of go through just a little bit of a prep routine as well as just some modifications to get into a deep squat. Now, I'm going to show you a great exercise to do that, um, something that we do as a warm-up for all of our fitness classes. It's called a squat stand. Now, with the squat stand, what I'm going to do is spread my legs wide, put my hands around my ankles, and sit back into a deep squat. All right, my goal here is to sit back on my heels as much as I can and just kind of like shift from side to side to open my hips up. Now the key with this one is that I'm, as I'm in this position, you'll notice that my back is flat. Okay, what, what happens with a lot of people that lack the mobility to get down there is they'll kind of default into this rounded position. Okay, so that's not what we want. So one thing to consider, you know, pull yourself flat. But this is really hard for me to maintain and I feel a lot of tension around my hips, which I should, but, um, you know, but the point being is that as we stand up, you know, you want to do this, and then stand. The point being is that for a lot of people, um, the ankles are going to be a very limiting factor. Um, you know, and if I can't um, touch my toes, the hamstrings are also going to be a limiting factor. So, some ways that we can get around that is I have a, um, I just have like a half foam roll here, uh, but you can also use books or you know whatever you have available. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to prop my ankles up. Okay, so just so you can see what I'm doing here, just uh, see if this works here. There we go. As you can see, I'm just putting, I'm just elevating my heels here like this to allow myself to sit back into a squat. So, sorry, I don't have a camera person here with me today, but I'm, I'm putting my heels up and I sit back and you can see how much easier this is, you know, how much more upright I am now, you know, because we've taken ankle flexibility out of it. So the goal with this, you know, if you're just, if this is an issue for you, which it is for most people, just elevate your heels and some books, you know, just rock around, you know, at the same time, you could be doing soft tissue work with a, you know, rolling your, um, your calves with a tennis ball and stretching them, and, you know, as you go along, you can, you know, move to smaller surfaces that you put under your heels, okay, so that's one fix. Um, another being, I could take a chair... I can just hold on to the edge of the chair here and just kind of use the chair as kind of a counterbalance to be able to sit back. Okay, so for those that have maybe hip mobility issues or something like that, or if you don't, if you're not able to elevate your heels, this is another way to do it. Um, the chair would kind of be a progression from elevating the heels. So this is one thing um, that I might move to afterwards. So, but some form keys for this exercise. Again, think about maintaining a flat back. You'll notice that there should be kind of like a straight line from my head to my tailbone as opposed to kind of this rounded back. You know, and I tell people, um, you know, if, if this, if I were on all fours here, I should be able to serve a plate of food off of my back. You know, if it's rounded, it's sliding off, okay? And so, as far as how long we spend in that position, <laughs> I'm getting out of it because it's painful. Uh, not painful, but, you know, sore. Uh, I'd say start with about maybe 10 to 15 second holds, rock around. You know, you shouldn't feel like anything is ripping or tearing. It should just feel like a good, you know, stretch, higher level stretch, but, Work from anywhere from maybe 10 to 15 seconds up to, you know, add five to 10 seconds a week. You know, I have clients that can get into a, that position now for up to five minutes. So, you know, that's that's on the extreme end. But several sets of 10 to 15 seconds, working up to 30 seconds to 60 seconds, you know, is generally going to be what we what we're looking for there. Give that a go. You know, it can be done throughout the day, maybe three sets throughout the day, and uh, again daily, just to keep the hips open. You know, it's a great drill to help to stave off some of these things that come with the pregnancy. So really give that a go and uh, let me know how it goes.